Hey you mob, welcome to this week's edition of Deadly Choices TV. I'm Tamika Upton, Deadly Choices Ambassador, and we've got some deadly yarns about some of our programs for you this week. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands from which we are broadcasting here today in Brisbane, plus the many other lands in which our listeners are tuning in from, and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Deadly Choices TV, a new weekly program, showcases the behind the scenes work that goes on to produce and deliver our Deadly Choices programs, plus our health services that are available in our 19 clinics across South East Queensland. First up today, we are catching up with Dr. Richard Mills to yarn about our telehealth services available in our clinics and why it's a deadly way to stay connected and attend your appointments. Welcome, Dr. Mills. Um, I'm going to ask you a few questions about telehealth. Yeah, sure. Um, so what is telehealth and how does it work? So telehealth has been around for a long time and I suppose in its broadest meaning it's uh, the use of telecommunications. So telephone and video to um, engage with clients um, in the health context. So in other words, uh, instead of having a face-to-face -face meeting with a, a patient or a client, um, doing it over the telephone or, the, or a video link. Is telehealth free? Telehealth is free. <laughs> Um, and we've, over the last sort of uh, two years, uh, we've actually uh, developed telehealth much more than in previous uh, decades. So, I mean, I've been a GP for a, quite a long time now, and uh, we've always used telephone, um, but not so much uh, video. And so the, the advent of the telehealth Medicare support has enabled us to use video links with uh, clients to an extent that we, d we haven't used before. And it's been um, really good actually. It's been a really useful addition to the, the, the range of services that we can offer. Of course, there's uh, amazing advantages from doing telehealth. Uh, you know, it's, in it's instant, people can join their a practitioner from home so you kind of you don't have to leave your house to do it and that's been really important at times where you know we've been having to isolate and we've been in lockdowns and uh, and even when people have been have had covid and we can do video consultations with with them in yeah, their own homes during that time so uh, there are definite advantages to telehealth and which services can be accessed via telehealth appointments? Well, pretty much any service, actually. So, um, you know, you might think that podiatry, where, you know, you have attention to your feet, you might think, well, that would be very difficult to do over telehealth. But, but uh, it's really important to recognise that uh, people like podiatrists, they don't just look after people's toenails or, you know, pare away bits of dead skin or whatever on people's feet but they do actually give people very sound advice around uh, footwear looking after their feet uh, preventive things that um, are related to um, the health of our feet and obviously if we're um, if our feet are crook um, and you know we're not going to be able to get very far particularly if we have to walk <laughs> walk there so that's just one example podiatry but obviously we've had um, GPs, we've had nurses, uh, we've had Aboriginal health workers connecting with clients via telehealth and then all of the other allied health uh, professionals as well including exercise physiologists who've been doing one-to-one -one, um, coaching with people around you know their exercise programs, we've had physiotherapists who are checking in and demonstrating for people how to to look after their um, their physical health uh, conditions um, and yeah, you name it really, every, everybody's had an opportunity to, uh, to engage via health, telehealth. And, and one of the real sort of pluses has been f uh, the members of the social health team, including the psychologists and counsellors. And for some clients um, who have mental unwellness, the, the opportunity to connect with their therapist and their, their um, has actually been really welcome. And what if I don't have a working phone or a smartphone? Yeah, so that's a tricky one. I mean, we can use a normal, an, an old-fashioned phone. It doesn't have to be a, a smartphone, but obviously to do the video link up, you do need to have a, a smartphone. Um, and we do have the telehealth connectors, so across the southeast Queensland uh, region. 
we have, I think it's about half a dozen um, members of the team who can come out to people's homes. They, we, we can make um, devices available for people. We can make um, data available for people who are, are struggling with that, uh, with having enough data or, or knowing how to um, connect. And um, so we've got those telehealth connect, connector team who can really facilitate those uh, interactions. And they can even come and visit people and they can sort of be with them during the, the first time they use the, the telehealth. And we've got some really amazing examples of you know, elders really um, buying into the telehealth and utilizing it and uh, demanding telehealth uh, when they feel that actually it's not really necessary for me to go for that face-to-face. -face. I'd much rather connect up with the practitioner um, via telehealth. And how can I set up a telehealth appointment? Well, all you need to do is contact your local community-controlled health service. So we're still using the traditional method of, you know, call ahead and make your appointment. Um, and uh, we're anticipating in the future that we will have some other methods, so online bookings and those kind of things, not far off really across our network. And some of the clinics are, also, are already using that technology. Uh, but for the majority of people, it's still, you know, pick up, the pho pick up your phone, whether it's your old fashioned phone <laughs> or whether it's a smartphone, um, call your local Aboriginal community controlled health service, have a, have a yarn with one of our deadly receptionists and they'll uh, facilitate uh, that process of, of uh, setting up a telehealth appointment for you. The other way you can do it, of course, is uh, if you've got COVID-related issues, if you've got flood-related issues, if you've got whatever related issue and you, you're not really sure how to connect with the service that you need, you can phone Moblink. So Moblink's available on 1800 254 354. And if you're uncertain how to connect with the service that you need, there, that's the place to, to begin. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. So there you have it. Telehealth makes it easier for MOB to attend appointments and access health services from the comfort of their own home. Plus, it's simple to use. All you need is a device with a camera and access to the internet. To find out more about our telehealth services or to get linked up, contact your local clinic today. It's deadly to see that our mob are still able to access the services they need even through these challenging times. Now we'll cut over to our yarn with Preston Campbell to talk about the new Staying Deadly Mental Health Survey and why mob should participate and have their say. Hey you mob, my name's Shanae and I'm here with the deadly Preston Campbell and we're talking about the Staying Deadly Mental Health Survey. Now Presto, why is it important to collect information from the community about mental health? Well, it's important because it's the community that, that need the help, you know, so we need to know what they need and um, even though there are services available out there for them now, um, we can come up with new things, we can come up with different things to ensure that our, our communities, our mob is um, staying mentally healthy. Yeah, and what's the benefits for our mob taking part in the survey? Uh, well, the, the importance of mental health and, um, you know, we all have our mental health, you know, people get a little bit scared off by that word mental. Yeah. Um, but it's actually something that's part of our life. We, we either have um, good mental health or not so good mental health, you know. So for our mob to actually understand why it's important to get involved, uh, to, to be part of the survey is going to be great because they'll, they'll find out a little bit about not just what the survey is, is all about. Um, they might be able to get something out of, it, out of it personally. Yeah, and what type of information are we looking for with the survey? Guess what they need. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I feel... Um, you know, if you're somebody that's, that's struggling with the mental health, sometimes you don't really know what you yeah. need. And it's really hard, hard to ask the question, you know, when you need, need that support. So, again, like I said before, to actually do the survey, sometimes you, you do actually think, you, you reflect on where you are in your life. And I guess um, to be able to do a survey that's going to be beneficial to the whole community yeah. is, is something important. And sometimes we just don't know how we feel sometimes and we need to have a yarn and just bounce those ideas off other people. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, look, we're human beings. Mm -hmm. For us, it's all about community, you know, yeah. and it's all about the connection, the positive connection. And for a lot of us, um, we feel disconnected, we feel alone sure. or we feel lonely. And, you know, to be able to 
it's it's a community initiative, yeah. you know, to be able to sit down and talk to somebody and actually, like I said, reflect on your life and find out where it is you want to go or where you want to be. It's all a positive. It all comes yeah. from actually sitting down and talking to somebody. And for me, I, I go back to country and back to family to to rejuvenate my mental health. So what do you do for yours? Uh, family is a big part of it for me. Uh, and, and like I said, it's just about connection, mm-hmm. uh, whether it's family, whether it's friends, um, whether it's going down down the beach and, and, and we're going out to the interland here on the Gold Coast. It's about connecting with land, country yeah. and, and people. Thanks, Preston. That's true. Our mental health is important and so is the voice of our people. The Staying Deadly survey is a great opportunity for our mob in South East Queensland to have their say about the mental health services available to them. Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander mob aged 18 plus and living in South East Queensland can register their interest by following the link below. Before we finish, we'd like you mob to meet some of our deadly students from the Power or Pathways Our Way Academy program and find out how their journey is going so far. These young leaders have been working hard to complete their traineeship and set themselves up for the future. So let's hear from them. Hi, my name's Azar. Um, I'm in grade 12 and I go to Upper Coomera State College. I didn't actually know what I wanted to do when I was like in grade 12, so I was kind of looking for something. And then my um, guidance counselor came to me and asked me if I wanted to apply for this traineeship. So. I was like, sure, I'll have a look into it. And yeah, I found out I actually really like health and working with mob. I actually want to do nursing now, so that's a big one for me. The support that I got in this academy was definitely having a mentor and a trainer, and especially with my workbooks, getting them in like together and in on time. Having a mentor um, with Phil there with checkups, like weekly checkups and stuff, just to make sure I'm okay with my school like outside of the traineeship just making sure everything in life I guess is okay. My name is Granny Johnson and I go to the Murray School at Acacia Ridge. I applied for um, IUE because um, it gives me a lot of confidence wise, new um, opportunities I guess for myself, get the feel for it in health as well. A lot of new skills, um, a lot of new like option wise is what I should do after school as well and probably just a lot of boost in myself self-confidence wise uh, the support at the academy is very good especially with trainees and like our trainers and supervisors they check up on us very frequently and just make sure we're doing good with our booklets and that so it's very good if you want to join up in this academy done a lot of like keeping me on track and keep me like focused towards my traineeship. So I'm set for when I leave school as well. So that's very good support. Thanks for watching and be sure to tune in again next week where we'll have a host of special guests and stories to keep you informed here at Deadly Choices TV.